Good morning, everyone, and uh, thanks for attending this session. Uh, I'm, I'm going to talk about achieving interoperability uh, between our IT solutions and our control solutions, and uh, specifically uh, how we did that with OPC UA. Just uh, queue up a slide. No problem. <laughs> One of uh, the challenges uh, that you'll see that we had in this is the, uh, the manufacturing footprint. And uh, my goal with this particular project that we've been working on is making it easy, meaning making it easy for the controls engineer and the IT people to uh, get communications on our plant floor. I'm going to talk a little bit about OPC UA performance. Uh, as part of General Motors, I thought I'd introduce our performance offering. This is our 2014 Corvette Stingray from Chevrolet. And uh, I'm going to check with uh, a speaker coming up in a minute, Mark from Universal uh, Parks and Resorts. I think this vehicle has better acceleration and more G-forces than most of the rides here in Orlando. It's, uh, it's very exciting to drive. The other uh, offering that we're really proud of is our, uh, our, two th our car of the year. This is the North American car of the year. It's a Cadillac ATS, and it's a, a wonderful blend of performance, uh, luxury, and also convenience. And uh, both these cars have a lot of operator assist technologies, but they do not drive themselves. So uh, we think that's OK. It's a pleasure to drive these two vehicles, and I hope you try one. A little bit about our manufacturing footprint. We have uh, 50 vehicle assembly sites and about 30 powertrain assembly centers uh, worldwide. In these plants, we use a distributed plant floor applications. And one of them I'm going to talk about today is an order management application in the plant. And uh, it has about 1,000 inputs and outputs, about 250 devices. Uh, trying to send us information and about 750 devices that receive information from the order management application. Uh, and most of these plants have over 100 PLCs, somewhere between 100 and 1,000. So the, the challenge, if you will, or what was making it hard, we had a lot of legacy PLCs in these plants, across 80 plants. Uh, they had a lot of legacy drivers in them. Uh, we were finding we were getting into issues where the network card was very sensitive to what version we were running. And when we looked at the messaging, the, the messages were application specific, meaning we weren't sharing the messages from these PLCs. Uh, they were also transaction based, which means that they only had a single purpose. They only fulfilled one, one distinct uh, communication. We have localized support teams in all our plants. Um, and the whole architecture of how we talk to PLCs was peer-to-peer -peer and connection oriented which means that uh, a lot of emphasis on making sure there's a good connection to the PLC before you send the message. And uh, the reason we had that is uh, we use an unsolicited messaging technique versus polling. From an IT perspective, when we looked at this project, what we were trying to achieve was to get a common integration down to any device on the plant floor, whether it was a PLC, a PC, or an operator. Um, the next uh, statement is kind of a, a little bit difficult, but I want to explain it, is we wanted to move towards a connectionless connectivity. So those words don't go well together. But essentially what it means is when you're talking to a device, you don't assume the connection is there. With every uh, communication, you check the connectivity and then you send the message. And this, uh, obviously, you can envision that with a wireless device or a browser-based device. Uh, we're also looking at the software industry trends and what, what skill sets we wanted to invest in as far as our development teams. Uh, we wanted to reduce the number of gateways. We had a lot of PLC gateways in our plants, and uh, they were either application-specific. They came in with a project at one point in time. They were based around some of our SCADA solutions, or they were controls proprietary to the particular manufacturer we were using in that, that tooling. Uh, and we wanted to improve our availability, uh, make it easy to support, configure, monitor, and uh, also make sure if we do have an incident, we can resolve it very, very effectively. The controls perspective was different. They wanted to make sure uh, the investment we had in our devices, uh, we didn't have to come in with this project and, and introduce a lot of new hardware. Um, 
the logic was fine. They really didn't want to introduce new logic in the PLC, but they did want to maintain or improve upon the communications. And uh, uh, the real-time messaging, as I mentioned, and uh, it's important to get it there within the cycle time of the process. So our approach, uh, we kind of have three layers. Uh, the top layer is about uh, our, our MES applications in the plant, and we wanted to do integration through web services and OPC UA services. Um, we also have a lot of SCADA applications that uh, do our monitoring and control, and we wanted to leverage their APIs. And then down at the manufacturing level, we have our PLCs, and uh, we wanted to focus that solution on OPC UA. From that PLC layer, uh, I'll talk a little bit about uh, our challenges. As I mentioned, we had plants, uh, we have multiple PLC vendors in our plants, uh, in, in, in the same plant. And uh, we were already leveraging Kepware for their driver suite so that we could talk natively to each of those different manufacturers. Uh, we were using Kepware to support some of our SCADA applications. And uh, uh, when we got into this project, we asked if they could help with the unsolicited message. And they built out a driver for us that uh, became part of their core product and we used in the project. And uh, we also noticed uh, from this forum and other communications and suppliers that uh, Kepware was embracing the UA strategy. From an application perspective, I, I want to talk a little bit about this uh, concept of uh, transactions and functions and services. What we wanted to do was we wanted to expose all of our existing MES applications as a service. They weren't originally architected that way. They were transactional and we were exchanging data, files, or uh, you know, a, a specific single function transaction, and we wanted to expose that more as a service. So uh, through the gateway, we also tried to in introduce the concept of services within manufacturing. That gives us some autonomy between the devices on the plant floor and the upper level system, so you can make changes without affecting each other. Uh, we wanted to support this concept of a connectionless environment where we would check the connection with each message and provide a migration path as we switch or up, you know, change processes on the plant floor. Sometimes that's best supported by a PLC, sometimes by a PC, uh, sometimes by a smart device. So we basically wanted to provide a migration path with the same messaging to any device. And we had to support some level of message transformations. Obviously, the PLCs had some very uh, efficient messages, and uh, we needed to make sure that could easily translate into our MES applications and then support the industry trends. Uh, here's a little bit about the solution and, and how it's put together. Uh, pretty standard, I, I think. On the far left is an application server. and. Uh, it basically is our OPC UA client, and it's what talks to our MES applications. It has all the business functions. We don't have a lot of logic in our PLCs around the, um, around the, the product or the business function that's uh, maintained in the MES layer. And it provided uh, a, an OPC UA client service. Uh, we built up a gateway, uh, which is our OPC UA server, and it would service the requests to and from the clients. Uh, it also had the job of talking natively to the PLC clients, and we also had a lot of operations where we do monitoring and control through a SCADA application. When we built out the solution, we used uh, assets from the OPC Foundation, and we also uh, used a particular product as a development kit to develop our OPC UA client. So, Essentially, we, we, we built this through a development kit and we just used uh, out of the box uh, for our server. I'll talk about a performance. This is a particular test case where we're looking at the behavior of the communications between the PLC and the MES application. And uh, it, it's busy, it, it really was intended that way. Uh, we essentially, this case was uh, having 10 PLCs try to flood the gateway with messages. So each PLC was attempting to uh, request uh, a thousand, make a thousand requests and we wanted to look at the behavior of it over the gateway. In this particular case, um, 
uh, this was acceptable for what uh, the purpose of this application was. Uh, it's averaging about 300 milliseconds, and I'll, I'll break that down a little bit. Uh, as I mentioned, there's about 10,000 concurrent requests going on, or as fast as the PLC could serve it up. Uh, when we look at the response time from the controls engineers, that's not an impressive number, but uh, when you look at it, we had about uh, 50 milliseconds to receive the request from the PLC all the way to the MES application. Uh, the application took about 200 milliseconds to create the report uh, and do the authentication of the request and the client. And then uh, about 25 milliseconds to send it back. And uh, when we looked at our, our current solutions, it was about four times faster than what we were uh, seeing out in the field. So this chart's a little difficult to see, but I, I wanted to take some time to explain uh, the difference between uh, transactions and conversations. What, what we're supporting through the OPC UA client is a conversation between the PLC and our application, not just a message exchange. Um, so if I walk this through a little bit, on the far left is our, our PLC with its registers. We have uh, OPC UA server, which is talking natively to the PLC. It reaches out to an OPC client, and that OPC client works with our MES application uh, for getting at the data. In this case, uh, it could be a weld controller on, in our body shops, and uh, a vehicle comes in the footprint, and it makes a request, says, I, I need to know what options are on this vehicle so I know how to weld it together. Uh, the OPC UA server says, I, I hear you. I'll, I'll see if I can find somebody to fulfill that request for you. It reaches out to the OPC UA client, and uh, the client says, yes, I can, I can do that for you. I can get you that information. Uh, first, let me check who you are, check the credentials. Oh, I know you, PLC number five, talked to you before. Uh, you're, you have privileges to go get this data. We send it into the application to get fulfilled. We send a message back to the PLC saying, uh, hey, we got your request, and uh, just uh, hold on a moment. So we send a confirmation to the OPC UA server and back to the PLC so it knows not to retry or resend the request. It knows that it was successfully received. We serve up the report and uh, we do some checking on behalf of the client to make sure it's exactly what they asked for. We send that report into the OPC UA server, which then uh, does the transformations, et cetera, to talk natively to the PLC and deliver the report. And then we end the conversation. The OPC UA client does a check and it says, uh, was that report okay and did you get it successfully? And the PLC says, yes, I got the data, thank you very much. OPC UA server goes back to the client and essentially says the report was delivered, thank you, and uh, moves on to the next message. So you can see it's a very verbose conversation here. Uh, why we wanted that, we wanted to, to guarantee delivery of that message. Uh, we wanted to uh, have some level of security because, as I mentioned, this application on the right doesn't know what it's talking to. If it's a PLC or a PC, the OPC UA client negotiates that and the OPC UA server is the broker and the translator. Okay. Uh, the results of this particular project, uh, we, did, we didn't have to change our enterprise applications when we, re when we uh, replaced these gateways. Uh, there's no change to the PLC logic, and we were able to uh, not introduce any new hardware. Uh, when we got into uh, building out the OPC UA client, uh, we had no issue with uh, when we first, if you will, brought it up with the OPC UA server from Kepware. They work seamlessly. If uh, you follow the standards, uh, there was no issue there. Um, we were able to, interesting, we were, I had two project teams working on this gateway at the same time, and one was SCADA-based and one was uh, kind of a pass-through communications, and they used the same uh, configuration. So uh, one day we were testing through our SCADA application, and the next day we were testing directly as a pass-through, same message, and uh, we le leveraged the same nodes, et cetera, in the, in the configuration. So it was very easy to flip back and forth uh, we did that on a daily basis. Um, as far as uh, the recognition of, of our opportunities to improve with the gateway, 
Uh, obviously, when you're looking at this conversation again, people evaluate the logic and the biggest point we had with the gateways, we took away all the roadblocks. We weren't now messaging proprietary to an application or a device. Uh, there wasn't any real constraint about how we formatted the message. And uh, basically, we saw lots of opportunities to improve how we were going to communicate between these applications and the PLC. Uh, we wanted to reduce basically uh, the amount of messaging as well because now we are effectively saying it's easy to share the message and the service. So the one, one event from a PLC could go to multiple MES applications, no more peer-to-peer -peer, uh, wasn't, wasn't necessarily a requirement. And uh, basically uh, we were able to deliver, deliver the solution on time, support the unsolicited messaging and uh, it uh, was actually a painless project and uh, hopefully the gateway makes it painless for our engineers and, and system owners to uh, improve the communication in our plants.